I am going to learn Python. I hope you're not as bad as me, but I bet it resonated with you at least a little bit. You decide you want to learn something, right? And you sign up for a course, but then sure enough, two weeks, a month, or a few months later, all that passion and motivation just didn't last because, hey, learning technical things is hard and self-learning is even harder. Not to mention, I often get people messaging me saying that they finished like two courses on Python or like data science or something. And then they ask, okay, like now what should I do? Because the reality is that just because you learn a skill through a couple of courses doesn't mean you know how to use it in a meaningful way, which is when you have actually learned the skill. I previously made a video called How to Learn Data Science in 2021, in which I introduced a framework for learning that sets you up for success in learning data science from scratch. In that video, I focus on the implementation of this framework in data science, but really this is a general framework for learning technical things. And this is the framework. One, learn just enough and then do a project then iterate, iterate, iterate. And the most important component, accountability. As much of it and whenever, wherever possible. So in this video, I'm gonna go more in depth about each step of this framework and introduce an optional upgrade that is even better at making sure you actually follow through with truly learning the skills and answer the very common question of how do I know when I've learned enough? Also, stay until the very end of this video because I'm also gonna expand more on how to learn technical skills more effectively and efficiently. Okay. Now let me explain this framework and why it works. Step number one is to learn just enough. The huge emphasis is on just enough. You see, the problem with learning technical things isn't that there aren't enough resources, it's that there's too many. There's so many introductory courses, books, and videos for whatever technical thing you want to learn. As a beginner, there's so many resources available and it's super easy to fall into the trap of the paradox of choice. And then you end up just feeling super overwhelmed and you oftentimes might just go like, forget the whole thing, right? And if you actually manage to pick a course or two and go through with it, you probably haven't really learned the skill because you still don't know how to use it in real life. So first off, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't actually matter that much which course you pick. The market of introductory courses is so oversaturated and you can get amazing courses either for free or at an incredibly discounted price. Choose any of the bestsellers and I guarantee you'll have high quality educational material that teaches you the basics of the field. But you see, the problem is that consuming a bunch of information from a bunch of courses won't get you far. There's a chasm between beginner and intermediate that cannot be crossed with doing courses. We learn technical things so that we can actually use them. There are some fields like biology, for example, where the focus of learning is getting the knowledge into your head. But with technical things like programming or software development, or data science or machine learning, for example, the focus is on application. It doesn't matter what information you have in your head if you don't know how to implement. And the catch is that knowing a lot of theoretical concepts or doing like perfectly scoped out little analyses with projects from courses is like 20% of actually being able to independently implement. The best way to learn how to implement is by directly practicing real life implementation. And that is why I'm a huge advocate of project-based learning. Doing a project is where the real learning begins and the theoretical knowledge comes alive and starts serving its purpose in helping you become a better programmer, better data scientist, better software engineer, etc. Besides, it's boring just learning a bunch of information and a surefire way of losing interest because what's exciting about learning technical things is actually using the skills to do projects, right? So remember, learn the minimum and then do the project. In practical terms, choose an online intro course or if you prefer books, choose an intro book to learn the basic concepts and terminologies of the skills you want to learn. And don't spend a lot of time trying to remember what you're learning or understanding every single little thing. I'll be going into more detail later in the video on the strategies I recommend for the learning process. But for now, I'll just like you to be to internalize that covering all the basics is just the very beginning of the learning process. The real learning starts with the project 
because doing projects is the absolutely best way to learn. Well, all right, hopefully I convinced you of the merits of project-based learning and to learn a minimum amount so you can get started on a project. Next step is iterate, iterate, iterate. Now that you've got a project under your belt, congratulations. You've just opened up your path towards really mastering the skill. Choose another project to do and you'll find that there's a lot of holes in your knowledge. But that's okay because you have the right frame of mind and you realize that's the whole point. You iterate on what you learned by filling the holes in your knowledge and diving deeper into the areas that will allow you to complete your project. And you keep doing this. As you become more and more skilled, you also have a better grasp of what projects interest you and how to choose the best projects to fill in skills that you want to learn so you can do more awesome projects. That's what most people get wrong about learning, by the way. It's a cyclical process. Now, the last and most important part of this framework, accountability. Accountability matters the most a few weeks to months after you start out and your enthusiasm and motivation starts wearing off and your goal starts looking terribly far and your bed starts looking more and more comfortable. It's when you feel overwhelmed by all the jargon and concepts, when you've spent five hours trying to debug your code and sometimes you just hit a brick wall and all you want to do is just give up because is the goal really even worth it? Maybe I'm just too dumb to even do it anyway. These times when you're at your weakest and the most prone to give up, which believe me, will happen, is when the accountability matters the most. It truly is your key to pushing through. So what exactly is accountability and how do you get more of it? The dictionary definition of accountability is accountable means obligation to explain, justify, and take responsibility for one's actions and to answer to someone such as the person with more authority. The word accountable is often used in the context of individuals taking responsibility for their actions. In this case, the person of more authority, the one that you're accountable for, is yourself. In a more practical sense, it's creating consequences for yourself, such that when you want to give up more than anything, you don't because the consequences of giving up is more painful than pushing through it. Now, the first step for getting more accountability might be a little surprising to some of you. It's introspective. Figure out what actually matters to you. For some people, that's money, others, prestige, and for some others, it's their family and friends. For me, what matters to me is keeping my promises to other people and being authentic to myself. Yes, maybe it's kind of sad that I care so much about not letting other people down, but it's the truth. Probably the worst possible thing I can think of happening to me is going back on a promise I made to other people, especially huge public promises that would negatively impact other people. I also have this thing about honesty. The idea of even possibly giving a false impression makes me literally so uncomfortable. As my friend and fellow YouTuber Kenji points it, I would be really awful at sales because I'd probably spend most of the time telling you about all the reasons why the thing I'm trying to sell you might not live up to your expectation and that you should always do your own research. Anyways, so yes, these are the things that push my buttons. So I maximize accountability by putting myself in situations where if I don't do the thing, I'll be going back on a promise and disappointing people. For example, I made a vlog saying that I'll be doing a project on NLP and that I would release it next week. People said they were really excited to see it and some even wanted to use it as a starting point in also learning NLP. And let me tell you, it was hard. I stayed up nights to get it done. But the idea of going back on what I said and having to make an announcement, in fact, I wouldn't be releasing it next week, was more painful, so I persevered. Another example that is actually still going on right now is when I announced I'll be live streaming myself studying for two hours a day on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday every week. I put it on a public Google calendar and scheduled live stream sessions on YouTube. I literally hate past Tina sometimes when I have to pull myself out of bed to go to these live streaming sessions, but I remember how much I love the community and our chats about data science or finance and tech and cats. But really what gets me is the idea of potentially disappointing all the people that join my live streams and use it to boost their own productivity. And that has never failed to get me out of bed. 1.5 months and counting. This live streaming example is also a great example to illustrate another concept slash fact. Accountability is compounded by consistency and habit. I consistently stream on Monday, Tuesday, and Fridays from 7.30 to 9.30 CST. And over time, it's become a habit. And I still hate past Tina sometimes if I'm really tired from the previous day, but the more I continue doing this, it's become much easier to get myself out of bed. And many days, I actually really look forward to starting my day, learning and chatting with the awesome people that come to my live stream. Shout out to Luke, Rishraj, Kalista, Lloyd, 2310, Sammy, Michael C from Georgetown, Ontario, Scott Miller, Sevi, Farhan, and many, many other people that show up consistently to study with me. Seriously, thank you guys, because I would not have been able to do it without you.
I also want to tack on another bonus method that works for a lot of people. It's having money at stake, like having to pay for a program or course. This one doesn't work really well for me personally because unless it's an exorbitant amount of money like my master's degree, I'm not motivated enough to do it. I have heard that this is how many people stay motivated though. In any case, I encourage you to introspect about what really matters to you and think about how you can inject some more accountability and habits into your own learning journey to maximize your chances of successfully learning the technical skill of your dreams. Now, let me also tell you about the optional upgrade to this framework that's even better. So it's something I've done a lot in the past to supercharge my own learning process. It also provides a clear solution to the question I often get from people, which is how do you exactly know when you've learned enough to start doing a project? Well, it's to find a project first. Some examples of this is to get a job in that field or sign yourself up for a project with consequences that matter to you. When I really wanted to learn to code and to do data science, I failed miserably trying to self-study. So after a hundred cold emails or so, I managed to convince a professor to hire me. He was taking a chance on me, but I think he figured it was worth it since he wanted to get hiring over with and I would only be part-time starting off and it was minimum wage. Well, I'm incredibly grateful to him because this really kickstarted my learning. Since I now had a project, it really grounded me. This time when I started an online course and went through documentation for R, the programming language that the lab uses, I now had a purpose in mind, which is to finish this project. I also had a natural answer now to when I learned enough. It's when I can complete my assigned project. Every day, I would look at what I'm supposed to be doing, not know how to do it, and then work towards figuring out how to do it. And slowly, I learned just enough R to be able to complete my task. Then, I was given another project. So that's where the whole iteration step comes in. I looked at what I'm supposed to do, not know how to do it, and so went through the whole process of figuring it out. Slowly but surely, I learned R. Not just in principle, where I learned a bunch of distinct functions, or how to manipulate some perfectly clean data to reach an arbitrary conclusion as part of the course. No, no, no. I really learned it. I could now use it in whatever project I needed it. And if there's something I don't know, I have the correct mindset and process to figure it out. And all of this came from focusing on implementation and practicing this framework. Yes, it was hard and stressful, but guess what? I did it. It's actually a brilliant setup because I was so freaking accountable. I couldn't just give up because the professor is paying me and I signed a contract. Plus, I was getting paid to learn, which is a really nice bonus. Another thing I have done in the past is to sign myself up for projects that have real consequences. Some examples of this I've done are pro bono consulting gigs and hackathons. Remember how I said that what I care about a lot is not disappointing other people? Well, these projects are done in teams. So if I didn't pull my weight, I'll be disappointing my teammates and negatively impacting them since they would have to go and pick up my slack. So that motivates me enough to get it done. I also wanted to make a tiny future announcement, we're more like foreshadowing. I'm working with some really awesome technical people to help develop a program that helps folks do end-to-end -end real life projects as part of a team of cross-functional partners like data science, ML backend, frontend, and UX. More needs to come in the next few months, so do stay tuned and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in finding out more. And finally, as promised, a whole section dedicated to how to learn technical things effectively and efficiently. This is the method that I've developed over the years. By no means is it perfect, and I'm still continuously tweaking and perfecting over time. It also won't suit everybody, but these methods have helped me a lot, and I hope they might also help you. For most technical things, if you're gonna go through a course, a book, or lectures, the best way to learn is to take notes of the higher level concepts and focus on understanding what's happening. Do not take copious amounts of notes and try to get all the details because as I've explained before, knowing it won't help you much in doing it. You'll pick up the practical details anyway when you're implementing the project. I also don't recommend not taking any notes at all though because studies do show that taking notes helps you stay focused, retain information better, and not get distracted by your cat. So yes, take notes, but don't take copious amounts of notes. Focus on understanding the higher level concepts and definitely don't worry about trying to memorize things or understanding every single little detail. I prefer learning through video lectures and I typically watch at 2 to 2.5 times the speed. This helps me get through the lectures faster and forces me to take notes of only the important things because I literally can't write fast enough to write down everything. Another good way of thinking about your notes is that it's a framework for how information fits together. So at least you know what you don't know and you can Google what you don't know to fill in the gaps when the information becomes relevant. I hope that makes sense. The next tip is that if you have a practical exercise as part of the course you're taking, do not skip them. Remember, doing is the best way of learning and by implementing things yourself, you have a much stronger grasp of the material and will make doing the project easier. 
And my final tip is especially relevant for those of you that are using the supercharged method of finding a project first. It is to not be married to a single course, book, video series, or resource in general. I used to have this mindset that if I started something and I didn't finish it, then I was a failure. And it took me a really, really long time to realize that is not the case at all. Resources are just tools. What matters is accomplishing your goal. I now know that learning is not a linear process. And yes, there are fantastic introductory resources out there. But realistically, no resource is able to give you exactly what you need. So if you feel like a course is going into details or subjects that are not really relevant to the project, or maybe you just don't like the instructor or something, then skip it or find another resource. Maybe the details and subjects that you skip will become relevant later when you're going through the iterate phase sometime in the future. Then just come back to it then. Do not feel obligated to finish a course if you don't think it's relevant anymore. Remember, your ability to complete your project is your guiding light, so do what you have to do to learn just enough so you can start working on your project. Alright, so as a summary, in this video, we covered this framework in detail. The supercharged method of finding a project first to boost your learning and strategies to learn more efficiently and effectively. Oh, that was an intense video. I'm going to go watch some anime. I hope the video was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream.